just a quick note on DNA denaturation and annealing. Denaturation occurs when you have a joined helix. So you have a strand and its complementary strand joined together and that usually forms a helix. Denaturation essentially means that you break apart the hydrogen bonds between those base pairs that holds the DNA pair or the double-stranded DNA intact. The main way that you should know about DNA being denatured is through boiling. There are certainly other agents that can interfere with those hydrogen bonds and break those hydrogen bonds and cause the DNA to denature. But if those come up on the MCAT, those will be mentioned in a passage or something like that. But boiling is the main one to be aware of. When you boil things, DNA can denature. And then the reverse is true when you slowly cool this denatured DNA. By slowly cooling it, that will lead to annealing, which essentially is when the DNA comes back together and forms that helix. You might encounter the term reannealing, which is not a proper term, but it's one that comes up a lot because it means essentially that they're coming back together. But annealing is the official term uh, that you should use. And in a lot of ways, this resembles the same way that you can denature proteins that were previously folded and then turn into simply their primary structure, just a string of protein. And then when you place that in water, for example, it will usually reform the protein. The reason that DNA will anneal is because it is a very energetically favorable thing for those base pairs to be bound to their complementary strand. And so eventually, if you slowly cool it and certain other conditions are met, the DNA will reform itself. So these two terms, denaturation and annealing, are things that can come up. And the only denaturation of DNA that you should be aware of is boiling. But know that there can be others that you might also encounter.